Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Book of Kings, where we discuss topics such as history, religion, philosophy, culture, and more, and the way that they all interact with each other. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video. Hope you enjoy. All right, everybody, here we are. We are back, and we are here with a new video. So, this video is about a topic which may seem like a bit of an obscure topic and which might seem unfamiliar to a lot of people. And that is the topic of clinal variation. So, many of you may be asking, what is clinal variation? Well, clinal variation is a concept in anthropology closely related to a topic which some may think of as a bit of a heavily charged topic, and that is the topic of race. So, in talking about what is clinal variation and how is it related to the topic of race, First, we need to answer the question, what is a Klein? Okay, we have the name, clinal variation, Klein. What is a Klein? So, to put it simply, Kleins are small clusters of genetics, features, traits, etc. within a particular species, which differ gradually across geographical locations. So, in essence, we have a given species. But within that species, there are smaller, more gradual differences in the traits of members of that species. And those are what we would call clines. So if you still feel a bit perplexed and you're wondering what, is, what does that all mean in the real world, don't worry, we're getting there. So we talked about clines. Now we're going to, of course, naturally move on to clinal variation. So what does clinal variation mean? It means variation in clines. Okay, let's go more into that. So, this is related to race. So, what is race? Well, a lot of people have different definitions of what race is, but what is the most widely agreed upon concept of what race is and how it's related to what we're talking about now, clinal variation, is that race is phenotype. So, phenotype is the actual tangible traits, right? Genotype is the genes. Phenotype is how can that tangibly be observed by the senses? So for all rights and purposes, when we talk about race and phenotype, phenotype means physical appearance. So what is race? Race is physical appearance. So clinal variation is clines, you know, small grouping of genetics. So when we're talking about clinal variation, what in essence, what it really means is the gradual variation in physical appearance. So I'm going to give you a little scenario, which is, in my opinion, the best way to describe it, which was the scenario I was given when I learned about this concept. So let's take groups of people. Let's take countries, nationalities, and the way that they look. Different countries kind of have their own little variation in how they look. So let's start as far north in Europe as we can get. Swedish people, Norwegian people. Well, what do you think of when you think of kind of physical appearance of Swedish, Norwegian people? Very pale skin, blonde hair blue, green eyes, very fair, right? And then you go a little bit further south. Let's say you go to Germany, right? Also, you think of, when you think of Germany, you think of fair skin as well, but maybe they're a little bit more likely to have brown hair. Maybe a little bit more likely to have brown eyes. Then let's go a little further south from Germany. Let's go to Italy. So Italy, maybe in the north of Italy, they have light skin, light eyes, light hair, but the further south you go in Italy, they get a little bit more tan, more olive complected, darker hair, darker eyes. And then let's say, let's go even further south. Let's go to say Algeria, right? Algeria, they're more tan, dark hair. Pretty much most people have dark hair, right? Majority have dark eyes. Some might have light eyes, but majority have dark eyes. You know, some might have like a light olive complected, but most are olive, most are tan. And even if you go further south, towards the south of Algeria, some people even have some sub-Saharan African features. They have an appearance of like a partial sub-Saharan African ancestry. 
Now let's go a little bit further south to Mali and Mauritania. The people of this region can have the appearance of somewhat of a mixed sub-Saharan African and, say, Middle Eastern ancestry. Most have brown skin, some may have more of a tan skin color, some may have dark brown skin, but most are within this range. Now let's move even further south to, say, Nigeria. The people of this region have physical features typically associated with someone of full sub-Saharan African ancestry. Most have dark brown skin. Almost everyone has dark eyes. So what does this all illustrate? Generally, when people think of Europe, they think of white, fair skin. Generally, when people think of Africa, they think of dark brown skin. But if we noticed in this whole scenario, did we observe that every country in Europe was blonde hair, blue eyes, and all of a sudden you go south of the Mediterranean Sea and everybody has dark brown skin? No. What we observe is there's gradual changes as we go little by little in in a particular direction. So that's in essence what the theory of clinal variation is. It states that in clines, there is a gradual change in the genetics of this cline as well as the corresponding physical appearance. So yeah, we don't see in this region, boom, everybody looks the same and all of a sudden you hop over to this region and all of a sudden it's a night and day change and everybody else there looks the same. We see gradual differences in in all these continents, which we consider kind of part of the same region. There's variation within that same continent and there's variation within another continent and all the changes are gradual. So there's no clear cut point where one group of physical features start and stop, and where another group of physical features start and stop. They all kind of blend together. In common conception, and also what was previously agreed upon in academia in like the 1800s and whatnot in the West, was that there were certain racial categories, right? And usually it was around three to five. But if, if we were to look at clines, you know, based upon genetics, there's a great number of clines in the world. But I believe they say there's around like 32 different clines, or some people may even say it's like around 100. And each of these little clines, these little small genetic clusters, they have similarities in their physical appearance. So while in the 1800s in the academia, all the scholars on the theory of race would say that there were three to five major groups, if we're going to look at based upon clines, we could say that there's a whole great number more than that. So a lot of people in anthropology who subscribe to this theory, which it is a pretty widely followed theory, would say that this concept of various different races or four or five or three or whatever it is, is kind of hard to justify with the theory of clinal variation. And if you notice, like I was saying before, based upon this theory, you don't see one point where everybody's the same and all of a sudden you cross this region, you cross this river or this mountain, and all of a sudden, boom, night and day, night and day change and all these people on this other side look all the same. There's a gradual change And there's no clear-cut point where one change begins. It's just gradually happening. So based upon the theory of clinal variation, all these various different clines, a lot of people in anthropology would be inclined to say that either there's 33 different races or 100 different races, or there's just one. Now, it might almost sound kind of like a cliche, oh, there's only one race, there's the human race. But if if you go based upon this theory, it actually can be very logically and scientifically justified that, yes, there's only really one race, and there are differences in phenotype, there are differences in physical appearance, but these differences occur so gradually that it is very difficult to kind of draw a line in the sand where one ends and the other begins. And I know now, In recent times, this has become a very heavily charged topic. And recently, we've seen a lot of a rise in some nationalist movements. What's kind of really came to the forefront in in the media and in popular culture as of late over the past few years has been in white nationalist groups. And a lot of them are really propagating this notion of this unified group, which is the white race. And it's kind of defined as this one concrete unified group. And I've heard a lot of people make the argument it's actually become very popular amongst people who subscribe to this, either to a great deal or even to a small extent, where they say race is real. So what does that mean, race is real? Well, based upon this, like we said, how do we pick where one stops and the other begins? Of course, as we understand it, race is physical appearance. So yes, there are differences in physical appearance in the world, 
but they, these differences are gradual. There's no clear-cut point where one change starts and the other change begins. So I've heard people use the example of, um, oh, well, race is real. You're going to tell me that there's no difference between a French person and someone from Papua New Guinea? Or you're going to tell me there's no difference from a Spaniard and a Chinese person? So those examples they gave, sure, yeah, those are clearly differences in the physical appearance of those those groups of people. But it can be argued based upon this theory of clinal variation. That's a very hyperbolic example. It's a very like exaggerated example because you're comparing people who are separated by a big span of land. They're very far apart ge- geographically as far as where their their native homeland is. So. You know, I would take those examples and say, sure, yeah, obviously there's a difference in the appearance of a German person and a Somalian person. There's a difference in the appearance of a Russian person and in the appearance of a uh, Yanomamo from South America. But I would say, well, how much of a difference in physical appearance is there between a Spaniard or Portuguese and a Moroccan now, obviously, there's some difference, but not a great deal. And obviously, based upon how close the regions of those two countries are, they would look even more similar. Somebody from southern Spain would actually look not a whole lot different at all from somebody from northern Morocco. Or another example I would give is what is the difference between a Greek person and a Turkish person? Greek people and Turkish people actually look quite similar. But Greek people are considered to be white European and Turkish people are considered to be Middle Eastern. So what really is the difference? So that that's clinal variation in a nutshell. And that last bit that I just talked about kind of leads into Another topic that will be the topic of another video of mine, which is very closely related to this, and that is the topic of if the differences between one quote-unquote race of people and another are so gradual, how did we as a world come up with this concept of different races? There's this race or there's that race, and they're separate and they're distinct. How did we come up with that? And I will reveal that to you in my next video. Thank you for watching. This has been another Book of Kings video. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video.